Sigma and pi bonds are going to be the topic of this lesson. We're going to find out that all covalent bonds are either sigma or pi bonds. Uh, we'll find out that all single bonds are sigma bonds, and therefore pi bonds only show up in double and triple bonds. We'll find out what kind of orbitals are overlapping and how they're overlapping, and how to identify each in a Lewis structure. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist, an entire year of general chemistry. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So the first thing we're going to do here is learn how to identify sigma and pi bonds in a Lewis structure. And we're going to do this before we even really talk about what sigma and pi bonds are. So, but in this case, it turns out that all single bonds are sigma bonds, every last one of them. And so if we take a look at all the single bonds in this structure, we can identify them as definitely being sigma bonds. So, and then it turns out when you've got a double bond or a triple bond, the first bond between two atoms is always going to be a sigma. And so when you've got a double bond, the first one is still going to be a sigma, but any additional bonds after that have to be pi. You can only have one sigma bond between two atoms. So a double bond is going to be one sigma and one pi bond. And then a triple bond here is going to be a single sigma bond. And then there'll be two pi bonds in there. And so now, without even knowing what a sigma or a pi bond is, we can actually identify them in a Lewis structure and count them up. And so in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sigma bonds and three pi bonds. Now, and that may be a typical question you get on the test, but you also got to know a little bit more about what a sigma or pi bond is. Uh, and this is going to relate into valence bond theory, where we talked about orbitals overlapping to create bonds. Now, we'll talk about sigma overlap and pi overlap. We'll start with that sigma overlap. So we looked at some examples here, and we looked at a molecule of H2, and we saw the overlap of s orbitals in the process. And it turns out sigma overlap, resulting in sigma bonding, is going to be the end-to-end -end overlap of any kind of orbitals. It can be s orbitals, it can be p orbitals, it can involve hybrid orbitals, but the end-to-end -end overlap of any kind of orbital so is going to be sigma overlap. And so this would typify a sigma bond. We also saw this in HF where we had, so the s orbital of hydrogen overlapping with the p orbital of fluorine here. And once again, that's going to be a sigma bond. But again, we also could have looked back at the Lewis structure and said, well, these are both sing single bonds. So they had to be sigma bonds. But again, it's just the end to end overlap of orbitals. And you might be like, well, OK, what does that end to end overlap mean? Well, it'll make more sense when we show you pi overlap, which will be side to side. But for now, just if I say it's end to end overlap, we also saw this in a molecule of F2. where we had the end-to-end -end overlap of p orbitals. And once again, that's sigma overlap. And uh, my second one there is a little bit ugly, and you'll just have to deal with that. So, But these are all end-to-end -end overlap of orbitals. And again, we can have this involve hybrid orbitals as well, but all single bonds are sigma bonds. But again, you can only have one sigma bond between two atoms. So if you've got any additional bond, a double or a triple, anything past that first bond is going to end up being a pi bond. Now, as with sigma overlap, you can have any orbitals involved. Pi overlap is going to be special. So for pi overlap, it can only involve p orbitals. And you might recall that the Greek letter pi is analogous to our English letter p in the alphabet. And pi bonds, pi overlap, only involve p orbitals. But it has to be sideways overlap, not end-to-end -end overlap. So if we look here, here's end-to-end -end overlap of p orbitals. And that's still sigma. So, But to be pi... You've got to have side to side overlap. And notice it's going to overlap on the top lobe, it's going to overlap on the bottom lobe, but that's still just a single pi bond. So, and again, you're only going to get these when you have double and triple bonds. That's the only time you're ever going to see these. So, again, here we had a double bond, and the first one was a sigma, the second one was a pi. Here we had a sigma and two pi's and the triple bond. So, and every time you saw a pi bond, it was always the same thing side to side overlap of p orbitals, period. It's sigma overlap that's a little more complicated. If you want to identify what over orbitals are overlapping in a sigma bond, that's a little harder question. But if they say, what orbitals are overlapping to make that pi bond or either one of those pi bonds, you should just say sideways overlap of two p orbitals done. So now if they want you to identify what orbitals are overlapping to make the sigma bonds, though, we got to take this a little further. So 
Here's the deal. With sigma bonds, if an atom is hybridized, it will be using one of its hybrids. So that's going to make this a little more challenging. So like if we look at this carbon right here, we learned in the last lesson that because he's got one, two, three, four electron domains, he's sp3 hybridized. And what that means is that he's got an sp3 hybrid orbital pointing towards every single one of the atoms he's bonded to. And so in this case, if we take a look at the one off to the left here, he's got an sp3 hybrid pointed off over here towards the hydrogen, who just simply has an unpaired electron in an S orbital is not hybridized at all. And so in this case, for that sigma bond right there, the orbitals that are overlapping are an sp3 hybrid from carbon and a 1s orbital from hydrogen. Cool, and you can do this anywhere down the chain. And so like if take a look at this one right here, we'll kind of pull him out. And in this case, that is between two atoms, in this case, both carbons that are both hybridized and they're both gonna use one of their hybrid orbitals. And we already said that this carbon over here is sp3 hybridized, so we know he's going to use an sp3 hybrid orbital, but this carbon right here only has two electron domains. He's bonded to two atoms no lone pairs, two domains total, and for two electron domains, he's just sp hybridized. And so he's gonna be using an sp hybrid orbital to make his sigma bond. And so the sigma bond here is gonna result from the overlap of an sp3 hybrid orbital from the carbon on the left with an sp hybrid orbital from the carbon on the right. And if we wanted to take the time to actually draw that out, it would look something like that. So it turns out SPs and SP3s and SP2s look very similar. So it turns out the SP3s are the longest, the SPs are the shortest, but they have the same rough shape, if you will. So that's why they kind of end up looking the same. Cool. And once again, you could pick out any of the bonds anywhere in this structure now and be asked to identify not only is it a sigma bond or a pi bond, but what orbitals are overlapping to create it. But once again, if I say, what are the orbitals overlapping to make that pi bond? P and P, done. So it's just the sigma bonds that can be a little more challenging. So the last thing we're gonna do in this lesson is we're gonna take a look at the molecule of ethylene here, and we're gonna draw in all of the orbitals that are overlapping to create the bonds here. And so what I'm gonna do first here is that, it turns out this is a planar molecule, it actually exists in a single plane, and I'm gonna turn it sideways so that we can see the orbitals just a little bit better. And so in this case, We'll have one of those hydrogens coming out of the board and then one of them going back into the board on both sides. And so now instead of being in the plane of the board, it's now in the perpendicular plane, kind of this horizontal plane right here instead. And that's gonna allow us to see the orbitals just a little bit better. And so if we take a look and draw in again all these atoms here. I'm gonna you know, give myself just a little bit more room. All right, so in this case, we know the hydrogens are not hybridized. They only have that one electron uh, in a 1s orbital, and that's what they're going to be using in every single case. And so I'm going to draw in those 1s orbitals. They're just spherical. So, and then the carbons, on the other hand, uh, in this case, they each have three electron domains. They're bonded to three other atoms, no lone pairs. And for three electron domains, they are sp2 hybridized. And being sp2 hybridized, you mix an s, a p, and a p. And since you mixed three of those original atomic orbitals, you create three sp2 hybrid orbitals that are all oriented 120 degrees apart. And so for this carbon right here, he's going to have one pointing towards that hydrogen, and that overlap would be sigma overlap. He's gonna have one pointing towards that hydrogen, and that overlap will once again be sigma overlap, and then he'll have one pointing towards the carbon over there. And so that's the way it works. The hybrid orbitals are always, you're gonna have one for every single electron domain, and it's gonna be pointing towards each of those electron domains. And in this case, they all are oriented 120 degrees apart roughly, so corresponding to the trigonal planar geometry around that carbon. Now the other carbon here as well is also sp2 hybridized and is gonna have three of those sp2 hybrid orbitals. One pointing towards each of the domains as well. And so in this case, we're gonna form a sigma overlap there between the sp3 of the, I'm sorry, the sp2 hybrid orbital of the carbon and the s orbital of the hydrogen, same thing right here. And then also sigma overlap right here, an sp2 from the carbon on the left with an sp2 from the carbon on the right. And then once again, sigma bonds, sigma overlap, 
between the carbon and the hydrogen there as well, analogous to what we saw on the left-hand side. Now, what's going to be new here is the pi bond. And so again, keep in mind that I've drawn this in such a way that these are all actually in the horizontal plane, so uh, perpendicular to the board here. And then what you're going to find is that you're going to have the pi bond from the sideways of overlap in the perpendicular plane, in this case, the vertical plane, looking something like this. And so you get an overlap right here and here, but that's just a single pi bond again from the sideways overlap of those, those p orbitals. And so this would be the complete orbital diagram here. And again, so the orbitals that overlap end to end, and it's always right along that internuclear axis, we say, that's always going to be the sigma bond. But the sideways overlap, and it has to be of just p orbitals, is the only thing you're ever going to see involved in pi bonds in this course. Uh, and that sideways overlap is indeed going to be a pi bond. So that is the complete kind of orbital picture going on here for ethylene. I thought it would just be instructive to do one last example here. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like goes a long way to making sure other students get a chance to find it helpful as well. If you're looking for the study guides that went with this lesson, if you are looking for the more than 1,200 practice questions I have, all part of my general chemistry master course, I'll leave a link in the description. Free trials available. Happy studying.